Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see the first of two interviews which I recently did with Mauro Picotto. In this week's vlog Mauro shares the story behind this classic Lizard. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Lizard, my interview with Mauro Picotto. Enjoy! Mauro Picotto is an Italian DJ and producer who is active in the music scene since the 1980s. He first started as a DJ, but later he also started making his own music under lots of different names. He was involved with projects such as RAF, Mega Voices, CRW, Plus Staples, Lava, Mega Mind, and many others. Under his own name, Mauro Picotto, he did releases such as Komodo, Iguana, Pulsar, Proximus, Back to Kali, and many others. For this week's vlog, I sat down with Mauro to ask him about the story behind one of his biggest classics, Lizard. My first question to him was, at what age he started to listen to music? I was very young because uh, I remember it was the time of the, the I would say, craft work coming out on the, and me going to the, you know, the fair with the, so the Luna Park mm -hmm. and hearing this music rockets. And I was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. That's when I start to be fascinated about music, but music actually entered on my blood very early because my dad loved to go dancing and uh, they was doing all PC folkloristic music, uh, dancing competition, mm -hmm. and I had to go even if I don't want it. Yeah. That's why music have always been in my in my blood circulation. Yeah, yeah. And and do you remember like besides Kraftwerk, like other bands or acts that you did listen to? Yeah, well, well, at the time for me it was like Donna Summer, you know, like uh, now in the memory like that, Fleetwood Mac, uh, Tangerine Dream, yeah, you know, stuff. Even Ojaro, my super tramp, and my mm -hmm. music knowledge at the time was like discovering. Also because even at the time, the new technology bring new band, new new sound for the time. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it's been uh, just, uh, you make me like having flashback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. So, yeah, and what, uh, around what time did you start with making music yourself? Oh, it was in the 1988, 1989. I actually started because in 1988, uh, a band uh, in uh, near my own town, it's called Africa United. Uh, they asked me if I can do some scratch on their music because at the time I was doing, uh, you know, the DMC competition and I was quite good. Huh? And I said, oh yeah, and you know, to having your scratch on a record of someone was mm -hmm. quite cool. And that made me like, uh, wow, what are they doing here? And I see it for the first time in the studio. And uh, from that I say, oh, how I would like to make music, but obviously I was not a musician, how I can? And then they said, oh, it's now the new with house music, there's a sampler. At the time it was only the Roland. I remember I bought my first Roland 330, that you have to have even a screen video on the side to editing because you can't do it only on the, on the little screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just really the beginning. Then, you know, from one, then I buy the 550, then I discover Akai because uh, in the 1989, I participated to the World Cup competition in Rimini, and I I met Max Kelly, a digital boy that is the famous Luca Pretolesi, mm -hmm. and uh, Black Box, Daniele yeah. Davoli, yeah. and they was all the people that was there at this competition, and uh, and they all were in, they were already very ad advanced, uh, creative and productive people. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're living in that kind of environment, it's a stimulate for you and yeah, yeah. for everyone. And just I like, oh, I want to try to making my own music. And uh, I start home in my room with my equipment, sampling records, putting track together. Then when I did my first demo, I went to Media Records in uh, Brescia. I went there and they listening and they say, yeah, we like it, but you need to making to come here and producing in our studio because of the quality. Yeah, yeah. And we did, and uh, my track, first track was uh, We Gonna Get, RIF. Yeah. RIF, uh, I don't know why at the time 
they want to use their own ba band name and don't let the DJ becoming mm -hmm. popular. There was a bit of political side, but yeah. anyway, they start one track, then I made another one. It was again all right. I always say all right because you never know actually what's, what's going on. But I know it was good because then they offered me to become a, a, a member of Media Records. And then after a few years, I even, they also offered me to become partner mm -hmm. of the record company. And it's been uh, very helpful for the way to learn to how to produce music, to be creative uh, in, the, in that world. But at the same time, also teach me that uh, it's important to learn and then be ready to change because yeah. the, the changing is always ahead of every kind of uh, business uh, in any world. Then for me, obviously, my goal was when I left it because uh, to to be able to produce it myself to tour around the world as a DJ, that was the best thing I done. In my yeah, life. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, yeah, it's your hobby, and then no, I, I imagine if I was still there, I would yeah. have been failed. At yeah, and the story. Yeah. So yeah, for this walk, we're going to talk about the track Lizard, which is which is one of your most well-known tracks uh, and also a massive classic. Uh, first things first, was there anything that that did inspire you when you started to work on Lizard? But his, he actually Lizard started in a very funny way because I, I was on a Sunday playing in a club in uh, near Mondovi and the DJ before me left the, you know when you stop at the time was no CD or mm -hmm. stuff like that, left the needle on the record when you stop and was an MC introducing the next DJ that was me and uh, become a Larsen in the club, in this mm. like that. And obviously my instinct was like to start with the track and the track was just starting with a kick. Mm -hmm. And because of this effect on the club, to work, to work, mm. I had the idea like, that's what the people want because everybody was screaming like, even if I have a play a Super 8, mm -hmm. it was actually just a kick with the Larsen of the club. And everybody was going mental. And I'm like, that's what you want? Yeah. I went in the studio on a Monday and I made Lizard in two hours. Oh, two hours? In two hours, yeah, because the first actually Lizard is in a big SAR 00345, I don't remember now. And is this Lizard is only like kick, bass and drum. There's no sample, mm -hmm. there's no gonna get ya. Yeah. There's no melody in the middle. That become after because when I realized that that sound, that track was so unique, was so exclusive, I say, let me build around this now a track. That's why then I found the sample, actually original sample, because it was a, I made I made it in the studio. The the gonna get ya. So is it the, your voice? No, it's not my voice. It's a, actually it was a singer that was in the studio for singing a track, and I asked to have a collaboration to say something like, you know, something is gonna catch you or something, and it's like, like what? And then. You know when something happened randomly, you just mm -hmm. say these things easily and in five minutes, five minutes it was done. Oh wow. We didn't, and you know, I maybe the only one know who is the singer of this sample. Yeah. Oh. But because it's been always a bit like, you know, about the called copyrights, yeah, we yeah. never say it was. Uh, you're going to keep it a secret. It will stay a secret. <laughs> <laughs> even, the, even the media records people would know. Oh yeah, okay, okay. It was only me. And this person. Ah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so, what kind of equipment did you use for the track? Oh, the track was simple. The bass was a bass novation <laughs> with the attack mm -hmm. cut off to do him to moon. Mm -hmm. Then we have like the 909, obviously classic kick with another. We always used to have like normally two kick. Then, the, or the snare was like more snare than just only one. But it was very basic because if you hear the first lead that is very basic as i say the sample quality and the melody was just something like he has to make you feel like when you come the break actually something that make you feel like in another world like for me i always take an example for example uh, i don't know if you remember bizarre inch Wait, which one sorry bizarre inch was a track uh, playing playing and now i don't remember the title that i remember this house track at some point stop and become super techno mm -hmm. soon enough and me, I like always this kind of changing, changing the world in the music. Yeah. And uh, I just so let's go with the sound of of uh, Blizzard, and then at some point we stop and we create this 
floating melody to make the people in that moment like relax, but at the same time having a journey mm -hmm. because there has to be something emotional, something for not just for your stomach, but also for your head and your heart. Mm -hmm. And that for me was the way that I always build the music because there has to be the fourth element to create a attention, interest and wishing to to discover what the music is like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was the most difficult part of the production? No, actually it wasn't. <laughs> because when I found the sound, for me, when I made Lizard, then I made Iguana, then I made Komodo. It's actually it's all up in, in, in two, three months from, from one to the other because the sound was the same, mm -hmm. the kick was the same, the bass was the same. I just need to change the dress. Let's yeah. say the good girl was there. I mm -hmm. just need to change the dress. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, that's a good one. Yeah. Then the idea was different because I remember with Iguana, we using, I we using, I always say that, but actually it was the voice. I use uh, one of the secretary who was working for us in media mm -hmm. and she was speaking French. And I say, come here, I want you to say la more per la uh, musique is techno, is in French. And uh, and she was uh, Angelisa, one working in media record, and uh, nothing. They just, as they say, it was very natural, and, and it was not thinking, oh, what we should do, I eat, or it just was coming to play in the club. Also because you need to think in this: media record has always been very, very successful in the world for the music, for the commercial music, for the pop music that they did, and this music at the time was even not considered mm -hmm. more than what yeah. it actually then become. And thanks God, this is, was good for me because when I was offering to the, let's say, to the hair at the time, they were like, no even care. Mm -hmm. And I, that's when I start to produce it with my name because they never expected the success of that track yeah. with my name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why, because it's, you need always to do something that the people don't know yeah, and then yeah. it's easy for me and then i did komodo komodo was the same komodo I actually i started with the 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 melody that was super catchy when i found the riff to, 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 to. but then i want to make an insert inside and at the time i remember i want to try with sadness from enigma mm -hmm. that was the first idea wow. but then it didn't came out as i expected because was hard to put in the the two melody together and one night i was uh, playing at insonia in uh, pisa in italy ricky larua was playing before me oh uh, sorry was playing after me and i remember when i finished my set he started with the melody of deep forest sweet lullaby and uh, when i heard the people they all was like floating this magic melody in the club i said oh this could be an idea that could work to insert on my track mm -hmm. And then I went back in the studio, I tried with this part, but then when I asked the permission to the forest, they did they want to give me. And I say, well, how I can do it now? The only way is to reproducing something very similar, but not the same, because mm -hmm. otherwise they, they can stop you. Only a few years later, I discovered they even the forest copy, because that oh. track is from Le Chant de... Le, Le Chant de is a French track from this folkloristic African band, no band, but mm -hmm. you know, it was the Chant, Le, Le Chant du something, I don't mm -hmm. know. And uh, anyway, uh, the, the story was we repeat, no repeat, we change the melody, you know, with a good musician, you can do everything. We take the inspiration, but when we wrote a new lyrics, a new melody, and then when they come back to us, oh yeah, we just found the deal that we say, okay, because actually it's true thanks to that i get the, the idea. inspiration yeah. but we call it with the name save a soul yeah yeah because komodo is original mm -hmm. and it's born before save a soul yeah. that's why the idea was to put together the two track and we found a deal with them but then komodo in the original melody that everybody knows is 100 percent original yeah 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 all right, let's go back to Lizard. Um, yeah, it became a big success and it even became a top 30 hit in the UK charts. Um, did you expect that Lizard would become such a big track? No, also because I remember, as I say, in the 1997, 98, when I made the track, because I played the first time that track on the 8th of December 
in uh, Ultimo Impero a mm-hmm. Torino in Italy. You still remember? Oh yeah, I remember because I have this acetate that would cost me 80,000 lira at the time. And uh, worth like 45 euro, you have mm-hmm. no CD at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I made this track and uh, was so strong. And I even remember my friend Mario Pugh came and said, how you think, how he came that track to you? Like, it's if I tell you, and that's the story of the last and mm-hmm. it was so like a, a natural vision, you know? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I made the track and uh, I forgot what it was. Good loss. Yeah, like like uh, if you if you remember if if you ah oh, yeah if it would become like a successful track. It's actually when then I did the, the track and I play in this I play the track in this club in Torino and then uh, I obviously come back in the in the studio I made it more commercial let's mm-hmm. say it is a big word to say because at the time it was so ahead of everything. Yeah. I made this track like, with the characteristic to be more popular. I send it to every general overseas around the world. And the response was, sorry, not for our market. Oh, wow. Sorry, not for our market. Two years later, in 2000, Virgin and uh, FFR was, mm-hmm. was fighting to get in the license for UK. Something that before I was giving for free, mm-hmm. then was paid with a big advance. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was just what was funny of that, yeah. the story. Yeah. Can you imagine? Two years later, Two years later, I was happy to, actually two years before, I was happy to give it for free, yeah, free. <laughs> just to release it. Yeah. Two years later, they pay me a, a, good, a good amount of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but sometimes it needs to take a little bit longer. But sometimes it's what they always say, if you are uh, surfing, if you are ahead of the wave or behind, mm-hmm. it's not the same to be yeah. on top. Yeah. So do you have any idea how many copies of Lizard have been sold uh, through the years? No, because at the time, you know, I never, I, I wasn't in that kind of a mm-hmm. part of the business of the company. Mm-hmm. I was responsible of a studio. Yeah. And for me, I only see the result that when you see the chart. Yeah. And then, but actually, I see from the copyright, you know, mm-hmm. when, when you're receiving your yeah. Uh, yeah. your money, that, yes, <laughs> it was a, was a good track, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, thanks to Lizard, you got the nickname uh, The Lizard Man. Uh, I don't think there are many DJs out there that have a nickname uh, thanks to one of their own releases. Uh, do people still call you The Lizard Man these days? Yeah, they actually do because obviously they remember. Maybe not so as much as before, but uh, obviously it's still in the memory of many clubber. But it's all happened because Pete Tong, uh, when he played on the radio, he, he called me The Lizard Man. That's when he started the name The Lizard Man. <laughs> ah, nice, nice. So yeah, what is your favorite memory when it comes to uh, to the release of Lizard? But as I say, that, like the the best memory I have that is when I made this track, played, was so successful in the club, and then I was like always checking how was going the selling and all like that, and it was very slow, but it was constant. Mm-hmm. You know, like three five hundred copy every week or every two weeks, it was keep printing and printing, and after two years, you know was still printing but actually was getting higher you know that's more and more and we were like two years later yeah. see, and then i write this license before from america was a eight ball in america mm-hmm. that they licensed first in america then as i say uh, pete tong discovered this track in america start to play on radio one and you know at the time pete tong and radio yeah. one when they play made the track huge yeah. Yeah. And, and then we had the uh, the big boss of the big company coming and want to license for the world. Yeah, and you were like, okay. <laughs> yeah, and then we just want to choose for who was the best. Me, I was more for, uh, at the time, for the Big Tone label. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, you know, we had to also take in account the other partner of the media record because they always more, uh, it was more for the business side and yeah, the creative yeah. side. And I say, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the Lizard is from uh, 1998, so that means it's 25 years old this year. Uh, are there plans for the 25th anniversary? Oh, for Lizard? Yeah. Uh, actually, no, because uh, for me, when this something is gone, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm no, I'm not nostalgic or, yeah. or people like that. As uh, for me, is I always looking for something to discover new, and there is new music. Mm-hmm. It's just the courage to to offer to the people to make them listen that new new kind of genre or new kind of vibe yeah because at the end it's not about the genre it's about the vibe yeah because people make so much confusion with now techno trance melodic techno melodic trance with house a super house the rave house and i think music is to make the people having a great time 
and to give emotional, to give memory. That's what is about the music that is successful. Then there's loop, and that loop is more for the for the druggy side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, speaking of uh, new music, you recently released a brand new album, uh, which is called uh, From the 80s Till Now. Uh, it's a really cool album uh, with a combination of a lot of different styles. So what can you tell about the album for the people that haven't heard it yet? But it's an album that uh, from the title you understand from the 80s when I start DJing till now and I still DJ. And uh, it's actually start the, I started producing during the COVID uh, pandemic. I was at home with a lot of time to listen to my old track or when I start DJ or even when I was a kid. And that's when I got the inspiration to try new 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 kind of music or more, more than new kind of music is new kind of uh, his, uh, idea yeah to try and music not just for dancing but also just to listen and that's why then when i had all this track together when the pandemic uh, thanks god was at the end and i realized that some of the track was working well some people were asking oh, why you don't release it I'd say oh i actually can do an album because why not keep it in my hard disk when now everybody's releasing hundreds of track every day, I can do an album putting together and I divide it like a football team, 11 track, 10 with like uh, the characteristic to listen. They are like two, three minutes each. And one is 40 minutes is the music that actually uh, is more like clubbing music. Yeah. And that's what is more like Mauro Pico to this day in the club. But when I say in the club, meaning the club uh, the 1000 capacity mm -hmm. because then the festival these days is different you yeah know? yeah you have to have this kind of uh, different vibe different mood in your in your uh, box of records mm -hmm. yeah That's yeah yeah true so yeah, there's a few collaborations on the album uh, you did uh, two tracks with uh, molella for yeah i think pronounce it like that molella 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 yeah. mm. for example uh, so yeah, when I was listening to the album, I heard the first few seconds of Restless, which reminded me straight away of the Gala classic Feet from Desire, which is also produced by him. Yeah. I, I guess he used the same organ sound. Yeah, I tell you what's happened. Uh, actually, uh, I always uh, love Gala mm -hmm. as a track, because for me, it's been a, a moment of genius. Uh, whatever yeah. has done that melody, if it's Molella, if it's Gala, whatever it is, there's always a combination of a good team together. But what's happened, I call Molella and say, Hey Molly, can you give me the voice of, Mo of Gala? I want to make a track for my set. Because I I hate to go and play the track like everybody has, mm -hmm. you know. I will make my own mix and then I can give it to you too. And that's what's happened. When you, is, you listen Restless, it's actually my remix of Gala. You have to imagine, which I obviously I have when I play my DJ set, when you hear Gala, it actually is Restless with gala voice oh. now i've discovered but then he told okay i do it but you're gonna give me uh, the permission to do the same for komodo and that's what's happened with uh, fly high to paradise mm -hmm. we made the track fly high to paradise on top of komodo and i made restless on top of gala ah I like that and that's the combination ah. now we actually have a new uh, track restless that is ready that is nothing to do with gala is nothing to do with Restless, yes, but is a new track completely that I think we will release it maybe by the end of uh, the year or in this autumn or after oh, the yeah. summer. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's a good track. That's why why keep it in our artists. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, you already said like uh, you cannot really play all the tracks from. Yeah, but he is Molella is a very talented yeah. guy too from Italy. He's no. It's not a case that he'd made more than one hit track in his life. Yeah, he did a lot, you know, if you check yeah. his discography. It's He's a very crazy. talented guy and they're still very successful because he is him and other four top, top DJ in Italy. They always playing for this radio. Now it's before it was radio DJ, now it's Emeduo. And they always touring together as Albertino, Molella, Fargetta and Prezioso. And together they, they do in show that like actually because the biggest show that you see at the festival yeah. here, oh, nice. they lose like they are our uh, Italian house mafia. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh that's a good one. Yeah, see, so, um, I can imagine you cannot really play all your tracks from the album in your in your sets. Um, so are you planning on remixing some of the tracks so they will fit in your DJ sets? Oh yeah, definitely. But I already have stuff like that because uh, obviously in the let's say uh, in 2005 when I moved to the dark side of pure techno with my Mega Night in Ibiza. I was like no keen to play my old track because probably it was nothing to do with what I was doing mm -hmm. at the time. And this upset a lot of fans 
because they, like, they was like, oh, can't believe in you do that. But as I say, I'm not a nostalgic person. For me, when something is finished, it's gone. You know, I start a new chapter and that's what I've done at the time. But now, because I'm touring again a lot, even if for me it's a lot, for others maybe it's not enough, but as I say, until November I'm fully booked mm -hmm. and I don't ask for more. But I did some edit of my track, remixing with the new sound that of now, the, the, the machine of now. And uh, I did like my Komodo, Lizar, Iguana, Proximus, like this, like that. The pools are all together in like uh, 6 to 12 minutes. It's like a mashup. Like, like a mega mix yeah, yeah, at the end. Yeah. And uh, it's actually mega mix of the original. That like that, when I go and uh, maybe it's a festival where I can only play for one hour, I can give what I know the people want to hear from me. And the rest I can offer what the DJ should be able yeah. to give every time they play. Yeah. That's what for me. Ah, that's clever. You play all the big hits, you know, and yeah, every, yeah but everybody happy. It's, it's clever, yes, but at the same time, was the way to make me enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Because this word, this work for me, that has never been a work, is a passion. If I don't enjoy, I don't see the point to go yeah, and do true. this. Because, as I say, uh, uh, I never work a day of my life when I'm DJ. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it's so much fun. Yeah. You pay me for the time that I left my family, mm -hmm. my house, like everybody when they go to work. Yeah. The difference is that when I actually work, that is free because yeah. it's so much fun. Yeah. So, so are you working on new music as well? Yeah, I'm already doing new stuff uh, that I actually just yesterday sent a few tracks to a few friends to testing as well. And uh, but obviously are just, uh, how do you call it, in promo, then maybe nothing happened, but it's quite unique sound that uh, we give it to a few DJ of that kind. Like for example, uh, we send uh, two tracks to Laurent Garnier, mm -hmm. and then unlucky at the moment, the, he, he can play because I uh, hope he has some uh, health issue mm. and uh, but it was nice to receive an email to say that very cool tracks thank you so much for sending you know it's about people that has that mature taste that understand also not just the commercial music yeah. also who try to go for new boundaries yeah that's so, why so is it more techy or it's melody but at the same time is a unique sound because even a snare or a, a heat act is not the one take it from the 909 or like that. Mm -hmm. It's all like no, made with noise. Yeah. Uh, like Ricardo Ferri, when I do techno music, I always like to go with him because he's a genius for me. Because he's someone that he doesn't accept compromise in the music. Mm -hmm. so for him, he's obviously he, he signed with me some of my heat track, but he know that uh, he hate that track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But it was a way to always keep the team together, you yeah. know, because then when I need to do something uh, more clubby, more cool, I I need the adult because, you know, he can find me the, the vibe or the, the sound that I want to recreate for that music. Mm -hmm. He is the perfect guy, yeah, yeah. for example. Yeah. But these are tracks that, as I say, are not being released, are just on my hard, Your hard disk. Yeah, and the five vinyl that are being distributed, one to Sven, one to, I still have to give it to another DJ, one for Amnesia, the Villa Lobos people, mm -hmm. you know, it's, then maybe it won't play because they maybe are too strange or too, yeah. too, too, too bad. Yeah. You never know, you yeah. know, but I think they are a good track. Okay. So, so what else can we expect from you in 2023? As I say, we are, we will have some new track coming with Molella because uh, obviously we will release some, uh, some of the track that we're working on. And then, uh, who knows, uh, maybe it's collaboration with someone else, yes. But as I say, after the summer, I'm we're thinking about that because yeah. now I'm like fully booked. Touring. I have uh, my daughter getting married in September and you know, and I want to enjoy the family. Yeah. I still like DJing, but as I say, three to four to five times a month, the rest I want to see my kids. One love to play football, uh, the other one want to do the same, but still young, you know. It's just the time that goes so fast. I see 25, 30 years ago, I was with my wife now that uh, traveling and touring and visit the world and have an amazing time, amazing life, and it's all gone. Yeah. You know, at that time, go too fast. And I, I, st I now I want to be nostalgic. I'm going to stay with family. Yeah. And uh, be careful. Before, music for me was number one. 
That's number two. Still very high. Mm -hmm. That's number two. Mm -hmm. Family first. Yeah, family first. Yeah. So what, what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Oh, I don't care. I have like a noise gate on my ear. Yeah. So actually, I enter in the car, even my wife, they live in the car with the radio. And me, I even not changing the channel because yeah. it's like I manage to have a, such a... When I want to listen, I listen. When I don't want to listen, I actually... It's like my brain ignored that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just shut off. Doesn't, yeah, yeah they, like, I, I don't care. Yeah. Like, whatever happened is like, uh, for me, don't exist. I don't know if it makes sense. Or maybe I just forgot straight away, thanks God. Yeah. I managed to have this uh, this characteristic that I is something that's good or I like it or uh, it stay here, it yeah. doesn't move. But something that is not good for me or, or I don't care, it just don't exist, it's yep. gone. Yep. I forgot straight away. Yeah. So far I've only asked one other Italian person this question. But the last question. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No, definitely no. Definitely no. Keep the pizza as it is, it's better. Yeah. So what is your favorite pizza? Uh, my pizza, simple margarita is the best. And sometimes I like with the mushroom, but I think the normal margarita is the best. Okay, good. Well, thanks a lot for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Music Express. See you around the world. Ciao. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, the story behind Lizard, my interview with Mauro Picotto. Mauro, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button, because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did a second interview with Mauro, in that one he will share the story behind Komodo Save a Soul. That interview should be online in a couple of weeks from now, so make sure to stay tuned. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.